this presentation, I, Susan Karki, will be talking about the design and construction practices of hydro power tunnel in the Nepal Himalayas. Today, I'll be talking about the support design method, excavation method, and current practice in the Himalayas. Geology The geology of Nepal is suitable for hydro power development because of its steep terrain and fast flowing rivers. Being a mountainous uh, country, the use of underground space is vital for the development. But due to the high rock cover added to the weak geology, many problems arise during underground construction. The figure, the figure on the right shows the problem of squeezing in Chamelea hydropower, groundwater inflow in uh, Modi hydropower tunnel, and phase collapse in Sanzen hydropower tunnel. These are all the photographs uh, from the Himalayan region of Nepal. And the rock stress also plays an important role during the construction of the project. The rock stress being highly anisotropic added to the tectonic stress uh, is also one of the causes for the problem. For tunnel support design, three major approaches are available. The empirical approach, the analytical approach and the <coughs> numerical method. In empirical method, relation is a relation derived by various researchers from around the world are used. Before construction, it is essential to identify the ground condition and by squeezing assessment, we can identify squeezing from the non-squeezing ground. Squeezing essentially means inward movement of the excavation boundary. Base relations are provided by Singh, Goel and Gymnast for determining the critical overburden. The inside overburden, the inside rock cover is then compared with the obtain critical overburden and if the value of the uh, rock cover in the site is greater than the <coughs> critical overburden the ground is classified as squeezing else it is uh, term it is identified as non squeezing similarly the rock mass uh, classification or the rmc has three is used to classify the rocks in various classes there are three different methods for rock mass classification the Q system, the RMR system, and the GSI or the Geological Strength Index system. The Q system proposed by Barton and team is an empirical method which is developed in the Norway for hard and brittle, brittle rocks. The chart provided uh, shows the Q system classification, which can be used to classify the rocks and define the support uh, for each class as well. The factors affecting the support requirement are the Q value, the dimension of the tunnel and the safety requirement. The safety requirement is given by the excavation support ratio or ESR in chart. Based on the purpose of the construction, several ESR values are provided by Barton et al. And which can, in the, and these values can be found in their original paper. Similarly, the rock mass rating or the RMR classification also has a set of guidelines for giving de describing the excavation process and the support requirement for different classes this is uh, shown in the table provided the gsi or the geological strength index is used to classify the rocks based on observation from the chart provided the observational results are used to determine uh, the gsi value the gsi itself does not provide any support description but is an important parameter which aids uh, rock classification and is used for numerical modeling the semi-empirical method developed by Hook and Marinos is used to classify the rock based on the strain value. Strain here is defined as the ratio of tunnel closure to tunnel diameter expressed uh, in percentage. As can be seen from the chart, the method classifies the rock into five different classes based on their squeezing. The analytical method uh, addresses the nature of the interplay between the rock mass and the installed support. The Convergence Confinement Method or CCM is the developed by Carenza Torres and Perost is the widely used method uh, in analytical approach. In this method, three different curves are used as shown in the graph. The ground reaction curve shown in green shows the behavior of the ground as the excavation proceeds. The longitudinal displacement profile or the LDP shown as blue in the chart is used to determine the value of convergence with respect to the phase distance. And finally, the support characteristics curve, uh, shown as red, 
it shows the behavior of the support provided from the interaction of the GRC and the LDP the amount of support uh, requirement required is obtained and the time of installation of support can also be obtained from this method but it should be noted that the CCM method was originally developed for circular tunnel under hydrostatic stress condition so uh, so precautions should be taken while using the method for non circular section and also the method should not be relied upon for the final design of the tunnel finally the numerical modeling is a method which uses computational power for ground analysis there, there are very limited use of modeling uh, in Nepal which has resulted in providing heavy support the accuracy of modeling depends on the input parameters and since not every parameters can be known accurately prior to the construction empirical methods are used for estimation as such, Kharka has studied the different values of the residual GSI to be used in the modeling and his results are provided in the table. Talking about the excavation method, there are two different approaches for tunnel excavation, the new Austrian tunneling method and the Norwegian method of tunneling. The new Australian method of tunneling is an improvement in the old Australian tunneling method and the comparison has been shown. It is clear from the figure that the old method used heavy supports resulting in thick lining of the sections. However, the use of flexible support like shortcrete and rock bolt in the new method has provided thinner lining sections along, along with better safety and stability during construction. The, the introduction of shortcrete and rock bolts are, is the major achievement of the new uh, Austrian tunneling method. Norwegian method of tunneling was developed for hard and brittle rocks where uh, the NATM failed. Since NATM was uh, developed for weak rocks, it, it did not prove successful uh, for hard rocks which was subjected to overbreak. The major difference here is the use of, the major difference in the Norwegian method of tunneling is the use of steel fiber reinforced shortcrete contrary to the use of YMS in NATM. This, uh, the steel fiber reinforced short grid which uh, helped the steel fiber reinforced short grid helped to stabilize irregular surface formed by overbreak during hard rock tunneling this this table highlights the major difference between the two methods uh, natm as mentioned earlier natm is designed for weak rocks where smooth profile can be obtained after excavation while nmt norwegian method for tunneling is developed for hard foliated uh, rocks which is subjected to overbreak. Another major difference is the use of reinforced ribs of shortcrete or RRS in Norwegian method of tunneling. This method uh, does not recommend the use of concrete lining like in uh, new Austri Austrian tunneling method. Instead, it uses RRS which are, uh, which are simply rods placed along the alignment of tunnel over which uh, Shortcrete are spread. Talking about tunneling in the Himalayas, Khorka has provided an overview of uh, how tunnel is designed in the Himalayas, and this is shown in the flowchart provided. Uh, firstly, geological investigation is carried out to classify the rock mass. If the rocks can be classified according to any available standard method, further design is done based on the method. Else, analytical approach is used. The tunnel supports are then designed um, for each. Uh, separate classes and during construction based on the observation uh, based on the face observation required modification is done to the design support uh, the, in the Himalayas the tunneling process can be summarized uh, as follows first the first step is fixing the alignment of the tunnel tunnel the tunnel alignment is checked after each blast to follow the correct path of the tunnel so that it does not deviate from its actual path. Following tunnel alignment fixation, drilling is done. The drilling is uh, the length of the drill hole is about two to three meters. Drilling is done in patterns such that the excavated face becomes close to the final required design face. After drilling, charging is done in the drill holes with gelatinous substance the 
the white lines in the figure shows the wire extending from each of the drill hole and which is connected to the detonator outside the tunnel after blasting mocking after charging blasting is done with the help of the generator uh, the blasting is done at staying a certain distance from the tunnel for safety requirement after blasting all the residues are removed to create a working space mm, there which is called mocking the figure the image here shows the mock which is removed from the tunnel and placed outside Finally, initial layer of shortcut initial support is provided, which constitutes the rock bolt and the initial shortcut. The initial supports are provided to stabilize the rock, rock mass, and since it is a flexible support, it allows a certain deformation to occur. Finally, final support is provided for smooth lining. In many cases, uh, uh, the rock mass is able to withstand the rock stress, so final support uh, the final concrete lining might not be required but the practice uh, of tunneling in Malays is providing uh, concrete lining throughout the entire tunnel section in the Himalayas the Q system of classification is followed but contrary to the Q guidelines steel ribs and concrete are also provided due to weak geology with high overboarding it is seen that the rock mass classification is inadequate for the reason. Also, due to the limited use of modeling, heavy supports are provided in the section. The figure, uh, the figure here, is of the headrest tunnel of Super Madi Hydro Power Project. In the figure, steel ribs are provided. Uh, it is clear from the figure that steel ribs are provided at a spacing of less than a meter, and the spiling bolts are densely provided. This practice of providing heavy support increases the time and the cost of the project. We can conclude that numerical modeling must be done during the design of the project to obtain optimum support. Also, monitoring and recording should be properly done as it can help in future projects in the region. Also, a standard guideline must be developed for the Himalayan region as the rock mass classification approach seems insufficient for the, re for the region. With this, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you.